Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Five Drinks Through Midnight, Quarantine Edition. Today we're talking to Daniel Jones, Global Brand Ambassador for the House Angostura. You know, these guys. But before we do, like and subscribe, really help us out. Five drinks, midnight, whatever comes first. How you doing, my friend? I'm great. I'm great. Again, thank you for the invitation. It's such a pleasure to have a drink with you officially. Excellent. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this. Speaking of drinks, what's our first one? Wow, awesome. So, you know, we have the rum, and we have a great rum portfolio. And we could just sit the rum neat and enjoy a nice session like that. It's a big bad boys, you know? Yeah. But I thought, you know, let me just be a little bit creative and give you some cocktail options. Because I'll be honest, man, it's been a while since I got a good cocktail at a bar. Uh, and um, I'm home right now, so I just want to make a cocktail big man. Sounds good. <laughs> so right now, I don't know if you're familiar with Old Fashioned Week, right? So you know the Old Fashioned is one of the oldest cocktails uh, you know, it has that legacy that goes all the way back to circa 19th century. And Angostura Aromatic Bitters has been a part of the very foundation of the old fashioned. So I thought the best way to start and kick things off with you is to celebrate the old fashioned. And one of my loves with the old fashioned is with the Angostura 1919. Now it's a gold rum and this bad boy really gives you a nice, delicious rum old fashioned man. You're gonna be happy with this one. I love that uh, you uh, said that uh, it was uh, to be served with a smile. So, <laughs> oh, it definitely. You know, I always say. So, one of my mottos is the final garnish on every drink is a smile. Excellent. Well, cheers, my friend. <laughs> cheers, my brother. <laughs> oh man. Fuck yeah. Uh, 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 Ah, that's why you started, you know? I always have this philosophy, Jim. So, you know, I've, I've been given the opportunity as the global brand ambassador for the House of Angostura to travel to over 75 countries and cities globally. And it, it's not the touristy thing. Yeah, you know, I don't get to do the touristy stuff. I, I go to bars. I go to a bar show and then I visit the top bars in that market. And I always have this philosophy. The first drink is an indication of how the evening will go. <laughs> I'm going to say, with you. I, I'm all, I'm all, yes, I, especially when you go to someplace new, it, it's always that first drink is going to be like, is it going to be a good night or a bad night? Or exactly. like, so yeah, your, your drink definitely <laughs> dictates that because again, with an old fashioned too, it, you know, it's three simple ingredients. But again, yeah. I agree with you that garnish. That smile, that last, that smile, is the bartender friendly or not? And depending on what happens that way, like, it can yeah. ruin your whole night. You can have a shit exactly, man. Listen, I'll give you a story, man. I always tell people, it's all about the bartender. And I mean, Dale DeGroff said it best. You know, he said, we go to the bars for the bartender. And, you know, the, the old school gurus I'm talking about here, Tony Abugamin, he said, you know, you long forget about the price, you know, and it's about the drink experience. And I'll give you a quick story about this, man. I had the best mojito, which was the worst mojito I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not calling it a bad mojito, but compared to the mojitos I've had around the world, this was not the best, but it was the best mojito experience. And this was in Cuba at La Bogadita, the celebrated birthplace of the mojito. Now, it's a claim to have created the mojito, but it's not... It's not factual to date. However, today, tourists go to Cuba, to La Bogadita, for the mojito. So I'm walking up the street and I'm seeing a lot of people and I'm excited, I'm smelling the cigars in the air, you know? And I see the entry and there's a wooden sign on the outside, La Bogadita, and I'm hearing music, man, the, the Spanish music, and I'm all pumped up. So I walk inside, I'm trying to go through the crowd and then there's live music with, you know, with like a three, a three person band. And I'm looking for the entrance and I realize I'm in the bar. The bar is just, it's so small. 
Uh, you know, and it's so crowded, I'm in the bar. And I looked around and I saw the bartender and the bartender looked old enough to be my granddad. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, these, so you have cruise ships coming in because, you know, they had lifted their bargo during this time. And so like lots of people, so they're doing like close to 1,000 mojitos per day. So there is no, you know, a la mode, like squeezing lime juice per mojito. No, there is no craft ice. This is pre-mix by whatever you can do to make this live as quick. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, ingredient wise, it was presentation wise, it was not the best. But listen, I will have a mojito anytime with that guy because the hospitality big man, it was so pleasant, you know. And the mojito was not bad, but it was not the best. And the hospitality was just incredible. So I had a great experience. And this is why when people say, you know, what is the best bar in the world? I think the question should be, what is the best bartender that you've been to or you've, you've met in these bars? <laughs> and, and again, I, 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 I'd say I, there's a bar here in New York that I say that makes the best old fashioned in the world. Mm. I've been around, and again, been around the world, not like you because you're you're working. I'm, I'm more traveling and drinking. But uh, I, I still say that, Aaron Ruth from Mother's Ruin in New York makes the best. <laughs> um, I have some bars that will challenge it, but I, I agree with you. The yeah. sentiments, I agree. <laughs> and, and, and I know, like everybody, like it's an insult to the rest of the bartenders, but it's not what I. But like her first one and her last one are the, exactly the same, and it's yeah. just and and they they have a motto of uh, free pour or die. So like they're, they're not measuring anything, but yeah. her muscle memory must be just insane because uh, it's, it's a crop one, yeah. constantly, and it just her her old fashions are from the first to the last yeah. are just the same. But it, it is yeah. just absolutely amazing. So, uh, well, cheers to that. Let's uh, get it. Cheers, my brother. I just again, <laughs> be, again, I can tell this is already going to be a great day. So, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> all right. So, question one, even before you got into the House of Angostura, you were a cocktail maven badass. How did you get started in the spirits industry? Oh, uh, listen, man, I, I, I'm from the island of Trinidad and Tobago. We don't have a cocktail culture there, but we do have one of the number one carnivals in the world. So it's a very vibrant, energized uh, island. You know, we love to party. But we just drink, we drink rum with coconut water, we, you know, we drink with mixers and, and it's not a cocktail or craft cocktail environment. And even though the classic Queen's Park Swizzle was created in the island, which Trader Vic himself came to taste, uh, we don't, you know, we don't have a tiki cocktail culture. But for me, um, I got involved with bartending because I had this dream to have a restaurant of my own Monday. And that was really the path that I took. Uh, into you know the restaurant business and I remember going into the bar and walking into the bar for the first time it was just a TGI Fridays but you know salute to all the people who passed through the TGI Fridays you know training it was one of the best trainings at, 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 in, a, in an era at one era it was one of the best <laughs> so I started with TGI Fridays and um and you know, I remember walking into the bar and seeing flavors that were liquids, banana, chocolate, liqueur. I'm like, what? You know, I'm accustomed to just drinking rum and beer coming from school, and I'm seeing all of this stuff, man. And then you have this list of cocktails, some blue, pink, green cocktails, and I'm like, oh, damn! It's like, <laughs> so this is a whole new world to me, and I, I just I got myself immersed into it, and I said, listen, I have to be the best of this before I even move out of it into you know into the kitchen and understanding more and going into that part you know people see botch and they think it's just an easy job man. and there is a dynamic to of easy for anything but if you really want to scale and if you really want to evolve uh with a certain caliber um it requires a lot more and this is what took me into that path so i started botch um and then from there i opened my own uh, company which was a mobile bartending company that would do special events uh, in different places. And that became very popular. And it became very popular because I was really keen on quality. Uh, at that time, Instagram and Facebook was not what it is today. 
and people, you know, sex in the city was was a big thing. So, you know, when you think about a cosmopolitan, you want to see it like how it looked in their hands. So this was my aim to give you the cocktails the way it looked. And, you know, and um, that was really part of the presentation was a big thing, how you dress, how you, you know, the level of service. And that gave me an opportunity to create, um, you know, to go into a niche of very high, uh, you know, quality events, affluent uh, clientele, diplomatic clients, stuff like that. So I, done, I did a lot of those type of events. Now, to market myself, I, you know, I started this business on my own with zero dollars. Like uh, I would, I, when I just started, I would borrow, I would go to friends like you, I would say, hey, could I borrow your ice scoop? You know, <laughs> <laughs> could I borrow a bar spoon? Like, this is how I started, man. And uh, the company grew massively with a warehouse and three trucks and, and a database of 86 staff. But, you know, in the beginning when it started, I had no money and I decided, you know, to market myself. I made it mandatory that myself and all of my bartenders who were working with me compete in all the competitions available. And by competing in competitions, we got, you know, uh, we won many of the competitions and, you know, it was in the newspapers, it was published, so people started hearing about it, corporate clients are reading it in the newspapers. And, um, and this is where I won the Angus Tour Global Cocktail Challenge. And I got the ambassadorship for a year in 2013. That's awesome. <laughs> and two, did, didn't you, like, you know, I think I read it, um, you won every category for the Angus Tour Challenge. Like the, there was four categories and you won all four of them. Well, before I enter the Angus Tour Cocktail Challenge, there is a competition in the Caribbean called Taste of the Caribbean. Now, this is like the Olympics of culinary because you have all of the big islands, Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas, you know, all of these islands going to Miami and it's a team. So on this team, you have the national, you have a national pastry chef, a national meat chef, like you have three chefs, you have a bartender and it's a full team. And then you have an executive chef and you go to this competition and you have different days for fish, meat, uh, types of poultry, and then for the bartending rum, um, you have three categories, three main categories, rum, vodka, and, non and most uh, non-alcoholic. And uh, I competed in 2011 and uh, I won all three categories. And I got, you know, so I got a gold medal in the rum, gold medal in the vodka, and also gold medal for most creative cocktail. Um, and then the second year again, when I came back, I won all of the awards again for the same categories. So for me, it was such an honor, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a Caribbean boy. I'm the guy who people think just makes rum punch and pina coladas, you know? <laughs> so um, this really opened up my eyes. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, I love the craft of bartending. And because I did not have access to it, I would go online and look at different styles from American style of bartending to Japanese styles to the British style of bartending. And I would, you know, make sure I have all of the resources. I, I had tools that were ordered. I would make sure that I'm updated with the trends of mixology. And this is, you know, I would educate myself. I mean, my my office looked like yours, man. Behind behind <laughs> you. <yes. laughs> I mean, right now in Paris, and Paris apartments are very small, so you're not seeing much. But my library and my resources were, I made an investment into it. That's and um, this really helped me. So... That started the journey for me into the ambassadorship um, for Angostura. That's amazing. Yeah, because I, I mean, I think that's as, as an origin story. I think that's just so fucking cool because one, not only just being a like having your own company, but also like requiring your staff to enter uh, competitions, not only to get the name out, but also like for presentation skills. I, you, you, I read an interview that you said that. Like it was all about just honing presentation skills and there was nothing better than doing that than competition. So yeah, yeah. presentation is a big thing, man. There's a policy process where it's like, um, yeah, I remember seeing this video. There's a video out there. I'll probably send you the link someday where there's an interviewer and he's wearing, they did they interviewed in the mall and the guy wears a white beater. That's a vest, right? And he has his mic and the camera guy and he's walking up to people and saying, Hey, did you hear about the alien landing or the UFO landing? Sorry. And people look at him and they're like, get away from me. All right. Now later he changes into a full suit 
And he comes and he asks the same question. And people look at him and are like, really? When did that happen? And it's about presentation. And because for me, um, I have taken a path where it's all about branding, you know? Um, I, I'm into marketing and I love marketing. And I've understood as an ambassador, you know, if I put on a tiki shirt right now, I fit the profile. You, you expect me to wear a tiki shirt. It's like, this guy is rum, tiki, that's what it is. You know, because you think pirates, you think tiki when it comes to rum. Yeah. But Amistura, you know, we have the most expensive rum in the world. We have a premium portfolio. I love cigars and rum. I know you're a whiskey guy, and but when you say cigars to a cigar aficionado, rum has a very special place in their heart spirit. So whenever I get to represent and I've started doing that, I've changed the position of how I present. I already have this hairstyle and, you know, the, the tattoos and stuff going on. So I can easily put on a tiki shirt anytime, you know? Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Now I have to tell you something, because we're drinking, this is a different session, right? Whenever I drink rum, I love my cigars. So I'm going to, you know, we started the first drink. I'm waiting for you to say, let's go to the next. But, you know, All right, just well, like, you know I'm going to have my cigar while we chat a bit for these drinks, okay? <laughs> uh, well, I'm almost empty, so we can we can definitely jump to the next one. So <laughs> on to question two. Awesome. So we're going to dive into something a bit more citrus. So we just went with a spray forward very light style of, an, of a rum fashion, right? Nice to cleanse your palate. You get some of the rum there, the warmth of it. And now we're gonna jump into something more citrus oriented. So a bit more spice and citrus with, it's called a Mori Amaro, which means love bitters. <laughs> so this one is using, uh, it's, it's, like the, it's like the stepchild of the Trinidad Sour uh, because you're using Amaro de Angostura which is the only Amaro that contains the Angostura aromatic bitters inside of it. And um, so Amaro by definition is an Italian spirit. And the bittering element, because the Italians after they eat their, their pasta and their bread, they would have uh, a digestive. But the category of Amaro has grown into the botany culture, where botanists are using the bitter and the sweet elements into their cocktails. So for us, we created what is called a medium classification. It's very similar to like Ramazzotti. You have different classifications of the category of Amaro. It starts with aperitivo bitters like Campari, Apro. Then you have light styles like Montenegro, Nonino. Then you have medium styles like Ramazzotti, Amaro, and Sturo. Then you have, let's say, Frenet styles like Frenet Branca, Lozano uh, uh, Frenet. Then you have Ferrocino or Casifio styles like Chinar. So these are very, you know, the category, I call it the yin and yang of Amari, you know, bitter versus sweet. So for us, this is the only Amari that has the aromatic bitters inside of it. That's why you see the iconic yellow cap and the white label on the neck. And it has that nice, rich, warm spice orientation. So what makes it so different? Any Amari taste, the bitterness is going to be vegetable oriented. For us, ours is spice oriented, which bartenders absolutely love. Uh, you know, so this one contains 50 ml of Amarve Angostura and 10 ml of aromatic bitters. Not dashes, but 10 ml. I, I, I was like, holy crap, that's a lot. <laughs> On to drink two. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers, big man. Mm. Oh, this is so good, man. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> damn good. The citrus oh. with the spice oh, is delicious, man. Mm. And, and this, this drink is called the... Uh... It's called a Mori Amaro. Okay. Yep. So a Mori Amaro is... Uh, it, uh, it's, it just means love bitters because you have two styles of bitters. You have what is called a potable style, which is a drinking style, similar to Campari or all the Amari categories I told you. And then you have the non- Potable style, which is the aromatic bitters that we dash with. You add only a few dashes. So for us, when we are celebrating our 190th anniversary at the House of Angostura, you know, we ask ourselves, what is the next move for Angostura? And we saw the trend of Amaria. This is where we explored the potable style. Uh, so yeah, so it's uh, some good stuff, man. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely great. All right, so question two. Mm -hmm. A little bit, you, you talked a little bit about it because Angostura has sent you across the globe multiple times. 
Do you have a favorite city to drink in? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> no, it's probably going to cause a little bit of trouble. But, uh... Oh, man. That, you know, I'll be honest, if I'm to give you my philosophy, Tim, it's uh, I'm, I'm a more in the moment kind of guy. You know, so I will say to you, every day I get up, it's the best day. Uh, in the moment, it's going to be the best moment. I've had this in Moria Maru. I, I created this cocktail. And I, I've had this from the inception in many different parts of the world. But you know what? Right now, this is the best moment I'm having with it. All right? <laughs> Can't argue with that. All right. So listen to me, man. Five drinks to midnight. Okay. I'm having the best Amoria Maru from the House of Agnes Thrill with Tim. All right, okay. respect, brother. <laughs> I I can't argue with that. That is, that is perfect. So cheers, brother. So I hope that answered the question because, truth be told, it's going to be you know wherever I am in that moment because there's so many great bars and great drinking cultures. I mean, we just saw the world's best fifty bars, you know, announce some of the top bars in the world, but. I will be honest, you know, I've, I've been to, to a lot more places that were not mentioned. Not just bars, but regions and countries that were not mentioned. And you see some incredible creativity, man. And it's, you know, so it's, it's one of those things in the world where I just, I, I don't say anything. You know, I, I appreciate the experiences. And like, for instance, I've done a, a series from the, from the moment 2020 started, I've been doing only digital uh, virtual sessions and this is the first session i've done with this unique style okay i've not done anywhere i'm having drinks and just enjoying it and having a conversation it's 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 such a delight right now yeah, I so for me, yeah. I, I really appreciate that <laughs> you know, I, I, so this way because the one thing i i truly do like i wish we were in a pub right now just having that conversation <laughs> and, and like just being able to face to face and do everything but you know hopefully soon we'll be able to to do that but like yeah like i, I just, that, that's the thing man that's what i love when i was looking at the episodes on youtube i realized man listen man this is this is like just drinking at a bar yeah. and that's what i loved about it it was like it was like a podcast at a bar you know it was it, so I, I really like the feel of it and this got me excited for our session yeah. <laughs> And I think to your to your point, even to yes, there was a lot of great bars that were overlooked in the fifty best bars, and I get it. Not everybody can be a winner, or whatever, but there are some really great bars out in the world, and I, I just want to get all aspects of that kind of story told. Like, I, there's yeah. great people out there that yeah, yeah, they, definitely. Listen, listen to me, man. Big shout out to the Conrad man, Angle, and the whole team there. They're incredible. I'll give you a story when I went to the Conrad. Uh, this is when they won the first, the first Best International Bar Award. I remember going to the Conan, and at that time, the only our our premium rum on the portfolio was the Angostura 1824, right? And today, now we have the Angostura 1787, which pays homage to the first sugar mill built by the French in the year 1787. Now that rum has uh, the youngest of the blend is 15 years old. It's it's just incredible. Now, 1824 pays homage to Dr. Johann Siegert, who perfected the formula for the aromatic bitters in the year 1824. So for me, 1824 is one of my go-to rums for my medium-style cigars, you know, and I just absolutely love it. But at this time, it was only just a sipping rum. You know, you wouldn't think about making a cocktail with such a dark, rich, medium, full-bodied rum. And I remember going to the Conat, and when I got there, the bartender came to me and he was so excited. He's like, hey man, we have a cocktail with Angostura 1824. I'm like, what? You know, firstly, I'm like, that is a premium cocktail, man. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you know, and, you know, I'm like, I want to try this. So they brought, a, an Angostura 1824 coffee infused daiquiri with a side of Mediterranean olives, man. Listen to me, man. Oh, mwah. it was so delicious. I had two of those and it was just incredible. And I, I you know, I have to say that 
they, they have built that reputation. And listen to me, when you visit the Connaught, they deliver. All of the bars on the list, that 50 best bars listed, all deserve their placing. They are incredible bars. I've been to a few of them and I can share the sentiments that people are, you know, that are, that are raving about. But I'm just saying that there's a lot more. And of course, you know, they're doing their best to bring coverage to the industry, which is great. So I'm not in any way belittling, you know, the efforts and, and all of the work that has gone behind bringing light to all of these great bars. But I'm just saying, you know, when I speak about my experiences, uh, there are so many, you know, when I can tell you, if I'm to say one of my best bars, you wouldn't even know about this bar man. It's uh, called La, Be La, La Valencia in Madrid. I don't know if you've heard about it, right? And <laughs> yeah, write that down. So hang on. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why this is one of my favorite bars, right? It is not, you're not going to find this bar in any of the world's best 50 bars. All right. This bar is owned by a family. When you're entering, it's, a, it's like a wooden sign outside. When you're entering, there's a one of it's like a they're, they're like a kid, a kindergarten kid drew this sign of a camera and it says no photography. All right. And you enter inside this and you feel like you just entered into an old Western salon. And the saloon is like, you know, it's, it's all good. You see barrels of sherry. They only serve sherry inside it. And it's homemade sherry. And they have three styles, you know, from Madeira. Like it goes up to different styles. And they also have homemade uh, tapas to pair with your sherry. Now you can choose, let's say, a half, a half or a full size of your sherry. And listen to me, man. They say homemade, but it's artisanal tapas. And you stand at the bar. You can go to the back where there's some wooden seats, but you stand at the bar. It's a long bar. And the family, the father, the son, you know, all of the, the siblings, they're not even in uniform. Like they're just dressed casually. And when you when you lean on the bar and you tell them what you want, they write it in chalk on the counter in front of you. And then they bring everything and you right there, you eat your tapas, you enjoy your sherry. You can do a nice flight of all the sherries. And listen to me, man. That for me, there's no branding. There are no big brands around. It's like <laughs> that sounds fucking amazing. That, that, I mean, yeah. that, I, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how are we doing on trick two? Should we move on to drink? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Uh, Island Manhattan next. Yeah. So this is again. <clears throat> we're diving into the classics, and I want to pay homage to the classics, man, because. One of the things that I love about classic cocktails, they normally have, let's say, three ingredients, you know, four to three ingredients. The moment you go above that, you're going to more of a complex cocktail. And there's some great avant-garde style, complex cocktails, but many of the classics contain very limited numbers, like four, three. And with that, you can taste all of the ingredients in the cocktails. You know, you can take something like a neoclassic, like a pina colada, and you can taste the pineapple, the coconut, all of the ingredients in there when it's done right. But what I love especially about those really authentic traditional cocktails like the Old Fashioned and Manhattan, these three, these three ingredient cocktails really highlight the integrity and character of the main spirit. So this is why many brands, when they launch a new spirit, they always like to use it in an Old Fashioned or a Manhattan. And, you know, you may think, oh, well, this has been played out, man. Come on, be creative. But truth be told, this is a tried and true tested cocktail. And it showcases the integrity and character of the spirit. <laughs> cheers. Ah, cheers, big man. Boom. Oh, this is hitting the spot. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. Oh, my, my next question is kind of a, um, I, I don't want to say lame, but it, it, it's it's one of the most frequently asked questions and I hate to fall back on it, but I, I think that you would have such a great insight to it. So um, if you could have a cocktail with anybody, who would it be? Oh man. That is something I haven't told about. That is that is new to me, man. That is not a huge right. question. No, man. Damn. Oh, okay. I know who. Rihanna. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, but it depends, it depends. I would probably have, because she's from Barbados, it would probably be something rum, tropical style, you know? But truth be told, if I'm to have a cigar and rum with someone, hmm, hmm, it would, hmm, ah, you know what? If I have to say, if I have, if the choice is open, it would be Obama. Okay. <laughs> I'd be down for that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I would love to just because you know, I'd love to have a cigar and rum neat, like the 1824 with Obama. That would be my go to. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I like both your answers, so I, I'm down for both. <laughs> you know, I would, I would love to hear how Obama would speak when he's had like three drinks down. Like, you know, he speaks so eloquently. I would right. love to hear. <laughs> Because you, it's like, you know, as a bartender, when you drink it, it's like, okay, one, we're good, two, we're good. When you hit three and four, that's when this, it changes. Things start yeah. to, yeah. Well, that, that, that's where like five drinks or midnight came from because we used to have the rule on Whiskey Wednesday, which was right. five drinks or midnight, whatever came first, because we knew that if you had more than five drinks, Thursday's yeah. going to be fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> so, Yes, I, I would love that, like to be able to see that Obama after like three drinks and, yeah. and a cigar. Like I'm down for that. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. oh yeah, that's that's what you say. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. <laughs> hmm. Oh, oh amazing. That yeah. So this really, you know, like it's. And again, one of the reasons why I decided to go with cocktails with you is because because you taste, I saw that you taste spirits neat a lot, you know. That's kind of your thing. You you know, you really dive into expressing and really showcasing the brands through that neat perspective. And um, I want to kind of bring back the, the whole hospitality, you know, and there's there's a point where bartenders got very uptight where they were wearing, you know, bow ties and stuff. And yeah, you go yeah. to the bar and you said, I would like a a vodka Red Bull, and they would be like, "No, I only do uh, I only do Manhattan's and and and, yeah. and, and uh, Cosmopolitans or no, 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 sorry, not Cosmopolitans. Um, I only do dry martinis. Yeah. Yes, you know, it's like there was they were very uptight. So then there was the resurgence of the bartender, where the bartenders became a little bit more hipster oriented. And they started relaxing and and just putting on an apron and then having a conversation with the clients and the guests, which is what we love to enjoy. So with that, you know, I feel like, you know, I wanted to kind of share that perspective with you. They don't want you to compare the rum with all the whiskeys and bourbons that you've been drinking for the past few days. I wanted you to just chill and have some cocktails, you know, and feel like you're back in St. Thomas with your $2 rum. Yeah, so the 1824, uh, this is, like you see, I already have the decanted. This is one of my rums that I have decanted here. And, um, Again, like I said, the story behind the 1824 is that it pays homage uh, to Dr. Johann Siegert, who perfected the formula for the Angostura 1824, sorry, the Angostura aromatic bitters in the year 1824. And our question four, <laughs> what's up with the butterflies? Now I'm going to share with you a little bit of the story of what I love about rums. This is not about, this is not about production. This is not about the yeast that we cultivate on our own. This is really about the, the rich history behind it. I grew up in the countryside and during the dry season, we have two seasons, uh, the rainy season and dry season. And I always remember, you know, my brothers and myself, we'd be out in the fields hanging out and uh, we did not have PlayStation or Xbox <laughs> during that time. So you're like, you're out in the fields just playing as boys. And we would pick sugar cane with our hands. You grab the sugar cane stalk, uh, with your hand, you break it with your feet, and then you you peel the the, the, the skin of the sugar cane, and then you bite into the sweet nectar of the sugar cane juice. But sometimes you pick the purple stalk, the green or the red stalk, and it's not sweet. So I always wondered, how did the farmers know which sugar cane to pick to make sugar that's always sweet? When I so when I got involved with the House of Angostura, I found out that the farmers knew 
when the sugarcane was at its ripest whenever the butterflies would sit on the sugarcane. For them, it was a sign from the gods. And for us at the House of Angostura, we consider it a mark of perfection. And this is why you see the bottles are adorned with the butterfly on the logo. And if you look to the top, you'd also see uh, the butterfly. You're not seeing it yet too clearly. All right, yeah, let me just turn it here. That's the butterfly right there. But many bartenders don't know today. And even though we've changed the packaging, at the base of the bottle, there is a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> so, now I'll tell you one more thing too. If you put the bottle under a bright light and a magical butterfly appears, you've had too much rum to drink, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So what I love about the 1824, it fills your mouth. You get the molasses, you get some dried fruit, yeah. you get a little bit of chocolate, and I love the finish on the back, which gives you a bit of the oak from the barrels we use. Now the barrels we use are second-hand or second-filled bourbon barrels, mainly from Kentucky. And one of the beauties of the barrels is that we don't rechar the barrels, we steam the barrels. Okay. Now, on the island of Trinidad, I have to say that we have one of the best cooperages in the Caribbean. And it can rival any cooperage around the world because it's such a good cooperage. And you could ask any rum producers uh, around, you know, what they think about the, the cooperage at the House of Angostura. Our coopers are excellent at what they do. Now, the barrels we use, we choose a size of barrel that allows for what you call constant contact of spirit and wood. So let me break it down a bit more for you. Now, we are 10 degrees above the equator. Unlike other Caribbean islands, where we are positioned, the sun is extremely hot. Now, it's hot everywhere, but because of our position, we believe that there's a lot more influence there. Now, when you put a barrel exposed to the heat, it breathes. So it opens up, it breathes. So when it gets during the hot period, it opens up and it cools down. So we choose a barrel size that allows for that movement of the spirit from left to right, right around the circumference. If the barrel is too big, the center of the liquid is not agitated. So it's like slow cooking. <sighs> what I was saying to you at the beginning was really important. So when we get the barrels, we don't rechar the barrels. The barrels have already been burnt, right? We steam the barrels. By steaming the barrels, we're able to preserve some of the material congeners within the wood. So it kind of, it latches onto the spirit with a lot more ease in the transition. It's a natural synergy of the spirit and the wood. And this really allows the, the rums to mature a lot faster. Now I have to make a point that's not given the credit that it deserves. If you take a barrel, you put it in Scotland, and apologies, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but you take the same barrel, you put it in that in a tropical region, there is an acceleration of the aging. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a difference. Now, we don't have a governing body that, that gives merit to it, but it's something we know. And this is why, to us, age is nothing but a number, big man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. So, shall we move on to our fifth and final drink? Yeah, let's do this, man. I'm going to wrap this up. Listen, I have to say, this is a poor drink, but this is rum neat. And listen, me tell me you're awesome, buddy. All right, it's a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation personally. You reached out to me. You sent me some beautiful glassware. I appreciate what you're doing. And I think, honestly, your YouTube channel is underrated. Uh, it needs a lot more because the quality is great and what you're offering is super. I appreciate that. So cheers <laughs> to you, my... And again, sure. <laughs> now, now at this point, we're family. So definitely, man, definitely. Listen to me, listen to me, man. You're my brother. That's how it goes now. So this is a simple cocktail, but it's really more of a digestive. And um, I really loved it when I, you know, when I went to, uh, I've been to Italy and Milan and, and Rome a few times. And I, in Milan, the drinking culture is really, you know, what we call low ABV is really part of their culture of aperitif. And uh, this one is a digestive. So you use a sweet vermouth with your choice of a marrow. And sometimes you can add a splash of club soda and with an espresso lemon peel. And this is called Trinidad Torino. 
which we call it Trinidad because we use the Amaro, which is from uh, the House of Angostura in Trinidad. So simple digestive. At the end of the night, you're closing things off, you're capping it off. And this is really why I wanted this one to kind of close off the evening. Absolutely. <laughs> well, cheers, my friend. Cheers, brother. So again, no stirring, no nothing. You just simply add a nice, now if you have a chill, it's good. You can have it over the rocks, um, but you're just adding a good quality sweet vermouth with the Amaro. And that's it. Really simple and delicious, man. It's yeah. so damn good. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. All right. So I'm very sorry to say we're on our last and final question because I'm really enjoying our time. But uh, yeah. our last question comes down to the flip of the coin question. So you can flip the flip of the Wednesday coin, you can spin it, you can flip it, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I've been excited. Listen to me, man. I've been excited to use this coin, man. This, this is too cool, man. I love the quality of it. And again, thank you for this. Oh, it's my a pleasure. Great, great gift. <laughs> All, All right. right, so I'm flipping it, right? I feel like I feel like I'm two faced. I'm not two faced from Batman. <laughs> All right. Since our question five, since only ten people know the recipe for Amaro Dia Angostura, can we make it eleven? No, I flip now, right? Yeah, you flip. Fuck no! <laughs> listen to me, man. I would love to know their secret, man. <laughs> listen to me. I, I'm trying to put together an Ocean's Eleven team to get into the secret room. Okay? So let me give you an insight. Have you heard about the secret room? No. So at the House of Angostura, we have, a, there's a door, a red door, like a little red door. A red door with a brass sign that says secret room. Now, the Amaro is different. Ten people know the recipe, but the aromatic bitters, five people know the recipe only. And only one of the five people can enter into the secret room. I've never been inside this room. I know the production process, but I'm trying to put together an Ocean's Eleven team, and I feel like you will be the best guy to, to be a part of that team with me, okay? <laughs> and if you need just somebody, like, just muscle that moves people are through yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. Right? <laughs> i'm down for that like i, I want to join I'll, I'll be george cooney you'll be the brad pitt okay yes. <laughs> i think i'd probably be more of the big rings guy like i just, <laughs> go down and just and... <laughs> but yes you, you 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 let me know like I would totally love to just break in, but like yeah, man, yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm working on it. I have to get inside that room, man. It's part of my agenda. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, again, this is fucking great. So, no, thank you, man. I appreciate the invitation, yeah. and you know, I have to say that I enjoyed looking at the videos on YouTube. Uh, you know, so guys. Tune in, make sure that you, you, you view and you subscribe. Uh, five drinks to midnight. You're just having a drink at the bar. Yeah. All right. I, I, and that's I, what it is. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Five drinks to midnight. Please stay safe. I enjoyed all five of our drinks. We are now family. Definitely. Thank you so much. And Cheers to you, my brother. So, uh, Jesse, my brother, thank you so much again. This yeah. was great.